Hello fellow aviation fans and flight simmers alike and welcome to this short video uh, that I decided to make on a neat little piece of software uh, that would be uh, particularly um, handy if you like me are flying in VR. Um, I heard about this software from players uh, playing in VR on uh, the space simulator uh, Elite Dangerous and they are quite happy with it and I've seen some of the videos on how advanced you can go with this software and it's quite amazing. Basically, you can make something that uh, resembles more or less an AI. You can make uh, your sm own tweaks to, to your flight for a better immersion, stuff like that. Um, in this uh, short uh, video, I just want to show you the software, tell you a bit about it, and uh, show you some simple commands that, that uh, you can use with it. Uh, it is still quite new to me, and I'm still trying to tweak it. Uh, it can be both, both as simple and as advanced as you want it to be. Um, one of the key things that you need to do is you really need to train your PC, your um, your voice recognition uh, software on uh, Windows um, to be familiar with your voice and your speech synthesis. Uh, so uh, you'll be guided through that in the installation process of this software. Software is called Voice Attack, and uh, you can purchase purchase it on Steam, and you can also purchase it directly from the website voiceattack.com. It will cost you a measly $10, but you can also download it for free and uh, use a free profile that will give you up to 20 free commands. Uh, so if you just need someone to, uh, to toggle your flaps and gear, then uh, you don't really need more than 20 commands. Um, but it's $10, so it's not uh, that much of an investment, and I do think it's really worth it, and I'm looking very much forward to diving deeper into the software but uh, for now I'll just try to keep it simple so if you're flying in VR you will have no doubt noticed that uh, there are some key moments in the flight if you're flying um, commercial uh, airliners uh, which can be quite advanced and a lot of stuff going on it's a two pilot environment basically and you're sitting there in VR you are limited by vision and by one hand control and you try to do two pilots job at the same time when uh, just from taking off and uh, in crucial moments during land. So it's nice to be able to just uh, ask your virtual uh, co-pilot to do some of those uh, simple tasks like, uh, let's just open a program here, to ask a co-pilot to do stuff like um, like uh, gear down, gear up, uh, flaps 1, flaps 5, flaps 15, 30, whatnot. Uh, so you don't have to take your field of view away and physically uh, move your hand towards that lever and toggle that and then look up again because just in those split seconds it's enough for you to get a bit of stray on your course and whatnot. So it's it's awesome to be able to just uh, focus on that and just uh, ask your co-pilot to do those tasks. Now obviously um, maybe you might be wondering what's the point then in flying if it's all automated and I completely follow you. I, I still need to get used to it and I'm not quite convinced yet because I do like that hands-on experience and you have pretty, <laughs> not that much hands-on as it is uh, in, a, in an Airbus or a Boeing uh, airliner. So, so you don't want to remove too many tasks. So you're just sitting there and asking the computers to do this and that. Then the point kind of disappears, I guess. Um, anyway, I want to show you some of the key commands I have inserted. I've inserted, uh, let's just look at the profile here. So I have all the flap settings and flaps up and gear, up and gear down. That's the settings I have uh, commanded. Uh, one thing that you will notice uh, when you get it installed and out of the box is that it can be quite sensitive. So if you're saying stuff like hoop, loop, boop, boop, it would maybe react to flaps 30, even though you didn't say that because it's quite sensitive. It really wants to, the software has this uh, goal of understanding you and putting in the command. So it really, really wants to put out a command no matter what you say. Um, so it's always uh, measuring whatever the word you're saying, even if it's not remotely close to the command, it will still try to match it like a, a child trying to make those puzzle pieces match, right? So you, you want to give it some uh, restrictions so it doesn't uh, execute commands here and there and left and right. You don't want it to throw out flaps 30 uh, <laughs> on when, you, when you're uh, passing uh, 500 feet uh, on departure. Um, so you want you want that uh, margin to be quite high. You want it to be very selective, and it might uh, cause you to cause it to miss a command when you give it here and there. But better that than it throwing out stuff it shouldn't be throwing out, right? It's better it's a few seconds delayed with the flaps and stuff like that. 
So I'll throw, show you how you can do it. There's two ways you can do that. As you can see here while I'm speaking, uh, now it is sus suspended, but as I have been speaking here, it has, I have not been saying these commands at all, but it's uh, listening and it's giving what it think, think it hears close to that command it has and trying to give it points. So here it, I have set the, the bar at 70. So it, it needs to score the recognition at 70 before it issues the command, okay? So it gave it a score at 43, command didn't get issued. 23, nah, command didn't get issued and so on, okay? And uh, just before I suspended the listening, uh, it had uh, one at 25. So it, it needs a score of 70 or above to issue the command and execute it. Uh, you can also, if you have s some commands, and I, I have had some issues with the flaps up command. So what you can do, you can go into the particular command and you can set some uh, command specific uh, confidence level limits. So flaps up, it was really hard for it to get to 70. I noticed when I really meant flaps up and I was saying it clearly or as clearly as I can, uh, it, it landed at just above 60. So I, I lowered the, the bar for uh, flaps up to 60, but it still remains at 70 on all of the other commands. So you can do that in the edit command there, apply it done. So if you want to just set the general bar, you could go here and there we have it, minimum confidence level, okay. Uh, obviously, if you want to set command, you go in, new command, write whatever you want. Uh, toga, just for. So you'll put in Toga and then you'll press whatever key binding on your keyboard here. So you do this and then you press the key and OK and then it will be an OK and then it will have that command. Simple as that. Uh, before you do anything else, then you need to go into X plane and you need. Uh, to put in the key binding for that command just to link the software, the voice attack software with explain. One last thing, you also need uh, you also need to choose the correct target system. So here obviously I could put it in uh, what program I want the key binding to go into. So if I were to choose um, my recording software here, OBS, uh, whenever I say flaps up, it will toggle uh, control numpad one into OBS and obviously that nothing would happen there. So you want it to be in the X system in X plane, okay, for it to work. So now let's jump into the simulator and let me just show you something. Now bear in mind, I am still trying to calibrate it just to just get it right. Also, I am still training my, uh, my uh, Windows uh, voice recognition software there. And it does that by me speaking to it over and over again and reading some lines that it has and it tries to to really nail down my voice, I think it only gets better than more time, but I need to take some breaks because you read the same text over and over and over to Windows. So it takes some time, but uh, it's a work in progress. And um, yeah, let's uh, let's check it out in uh, in Xplain itself. So here we are. Just unpause it and we'll get a ton of RAS uh, warnings. Actually not. So Let's uh, enable the listening sound. Now it's at flaps up, gear down, we're sitting on the runway. So uh, let's do this. So as you can see now it's listening. So if I say um, flaps five, there we go. Um, flaps one. Let's see what happened there, it didn't react. So I said that word, I won't say it now and it gave it a score. It came close, it came to 66, but not enough to execute. So let's try again. Flaps 1. There we go. Um, flaps 30. Okay. Gear up. Gear down. Gear down. There we go. Flaps up. So uh, let's just uh, let me just speak to you while and let's see if it gives us any errors uh, commands. We can also see what it's listening and what it's giving errors. So that was the error when it didn't execute the first time, and uh, there it tried to it tried to uh, match two now. Uh, one came actually close, even though I didn't actually say that word. Came very close to uh, executing that. Um, so obviously you need to be very careful. Uh, and you need to tweak it before you really, you need to do some test flying and really get it tweaked just to match the way you speak and the microphone you have and it's just a hundred maybe thousands of variables. 
So you can see just as I'm speaking now, it's trying to match words that I'm saying to commands and trying to execute those. But obviously it isn't reaching the bar that I've set at 70. So, uh, but if I were to say flaps five, it would, um, flaps five, there we go. Um, flaps up, gear up, gear down. So flaps 40, flaps 15, flaps 30, flaps 5, flaps 1, flaps up, flaps up, there we go. So yeah, there you have it. Um, one other thing that's pretty cool is that uh, I've tested this in VR obviously, and uh, the VR controller is um, fully interactive with this uh, panel here, which means that you can open your, uh, your Move VR, which most uh, VR users have open to um, interact just to see the local weather, uh, bat sim uh, frequency and stuff like that. So in open, so if you have it in Move VR, you can actually use your VR controller to use these. So you can, uh, after takeoff, once you have all uh, the gear flaps up and everything, you don't really need that software to be listening to you anymore. So you can just turn it off like so and it won't be listening anymore and if when you start your descent or getting closer to to the, to the area where you need uh, your co-pilot to toggle the flaps for you then you can just do that again and uh, you should be going um, so yeah let's just uh, pause this and let me give you some final commentary on uh, this here so obviously these are very simple commands uh, simple things that you could um, use this for especially when you're flying in VR you need uh, need that help from the, the pilot monitoring um, another thing I think would be cool I don't know if it's possible I think it would be hard because you would need to go into some sort of backdrop or to insert frequencies uh, to automate the radius a bit more uh, as you know in VR it can be quite time consuming sitting there changing frequencies so if you could say 118 decimal 93 and it will 118 but I don't think that it is might be possible, but it will take a lot of time and uh, tweaking into the um, dates of refs, I think, and I'm not sure um, because it would be more uh, interact. It would be directly interactive with X plane other than just uh, putting in hotkeys. But some of the things that you could do um, with the software as well, uh, you could have it to you could actually have it listening to uh, a couple of target systems you could have two instances running and uh, you, you can actually if, if you get an actor or friend or girlfriend or whatever to speak to you you can actually have it interact with you so uh, you could have run the checklist with you like um, um, after takeoff checklist uh, flaps up no lights and then it, it would launch some speech uh, that you have recorded and it will read out the checklist with you and you could go check uh, gear up uh, check stuff like that you could you could do all sorts of stuff you could do an interaction with the cabin um, yeah so sky's pretty much the limit so from what I have seen people using this in uh, Elite Dangerous it's quite amazing they have made their own uh, AR yeah, uh, spaceship that talks to them and knows their name and asks them stuff and yeah would you like me to put the gear down yes please you can do stuff like that um, so yeah that's the voice attack tool I hope you like this video I hope you, you find this tool useful obviously this is not the only tool to do this job there are plenty of tools out there um, so uh, don't be too uh, narrow minded I won't be I will be checking out the other tools as well but I found this uh, free first of all easy to use and uh, does what it does what it says so uh, I will definitely be testing this on a couple of flights to see if it's for me or if I still need to be, have hands on on everything anyway I hope you have a wonderful day and that you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and like and I will see you in the next video bye bye